This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, a violent 24 hours across Portland. What we've learned about the suspects in two deadly stabbings in Portland's Old Town neighborhood. Plus, neighbors are asking for answers in Northeast Portland. Many woke up to find their tires slashed. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a look at our Sunday forecast. Chris and we start off with a live look at our Wells Fargo sky camera still dark and early out there. Of course, we are about 70 minutes or so away from sunrise this morning. And as we check out the satellite radar loop, not much going on across the Pacific Northwest. One storm system that was whirling there yesterday in the northern Rockies still kind of sits there today. So they're getting some rain and some cooler temperatures. But on the west side here, uh, we've got another very warm day in store for us. And in fact, it's pretty mild out there right now. 52 in King City. PDX waking up to 56. It's 66 degrees already this morning in Troutdale. And as we hop over the Cascades, we've got some chilly pockets here, but not terribly cold. Baker City and Burns and Rome right now sitting in the mid 30s. You will once again have a nice recovery on that side of the state as well. All right, the plan for today, sunrise, as I mentioned, sun up at 710. Uh, full sunshine, probably not as breezy as yesterday, but still quite warm. We hit 86 yesterday. I think we're back up in that territory again today. And we're going to rip off a pretty warm and dry first full work week of October. I've got more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Too. We will see you then. Thanks, Chris. And a quick reminder this morning, the 50th Portland Marathon gets underway in just about an hour from now. Uh, even if you're not running, there's a major traffic impact this morning. Uh, here's a look at the route. An estimated 7,000 runners are going to be on that 26 plus mile course. That's focused around the city's core, but uh, heads all the way down to the Selwood Bridge as well. Now, we've got a link to the map on KGW.com if you want to take a closer look at that. And we start this half hour in Florida. Authorities confirm at least 77 people have died in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Entire communities remain surrounded by water. Search teams continue plucking survivors from their homes using helicopters and boats. But people in some of the hardest hit areas wonder where the help is. There has been no communication. Nobody official has come onto the island to tell us what's going on. We don't have places to go. We have no cars to get there. Now, officials in Florida say at least 1,000 people have been rescued from their homes since Ian struck. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden plan to travel to Florida on Wednesday. Well, people from all across the country, including some from our region, are going to Florida to help. Don Johnson with the American Red Cross Cascades region shared images with us. These are some of your neighbors on the ground in Florida, setting up shelter, moving food and supplies and helping families, kittens included. We got some pictures back from one of the shelters um, in Florida where they had brought in a litter of kittens, a family did, and they had set up a little pet area in one, one of the shelters there to care for those kittens. Now, early estimates predict recovery will cost more than $100 billion. For information on how you can help, all the different ways, head to KGW.com. The truth is, when they all happen in such a short period of time, it compounds. Uh, the impact compounds all of us here in the community. I think any of us that live here, that work here, that love Portland, um, you know, this is unacceptable. This is not the Portland that we want or know. Now, it was a busy 24-hour stretch for Portland homicide detectives. Four people have been killed in Portland, two stabbed, the other two were shot. On Friday, a victim was shot in the Hazelwood neighborhood. That person was, has since died in the hospital. Investigators say the suspect in that case was arrested and faces multiple charges, including murder and possession of a firearm. Well, Saturday morning, another shooting happened in the Wilkes neighborhood around 1.30 a.m. Authorities say that person died at the scene. And meantime, two separate stabbings claimed lives in Portland's Old Town on Friday. Portland police arrested suspects in both cases and charged them with murder. Alma McCarty has been following these investigations for us. Within just nine hours, two people were stabbed to death in Old Town in two separate cases. Portland police arrested and charged 50-year-old Dorian Cannon 
for the first murder, which happened before noon around West Burnside and Northwest 3rd Avenue. You know, noteworthy thing is this happened in broad daylight. It was right in the middle of the day, right at 1130, right before lunch. Later, officers responded to yet another deadly stabbing around 830 at night near Northwest Broadway and Cooch. They detained and then arrested the suspect, 20-year-old Khalil Ford. KGW learned both suspects in these murders were also arrested for crimes earlier this week. Cannon, who is homeless and has a history of prior charges, was charged for misdemeanor disorderly conduct. Ford, who has no felony record, was arrested for fourth degree assault, also a misdemeanor charge. Court documents show PPB responded to that call on September 28th. The officer found the victim with a bloody face and head on the ground on Northwest 14th Avenue, her walker broken. The victim told police she'd been assaulted, punched in the head and hit with a broom handle. Ford allegedly told detectives she made me assault her. He pled not guilty and was released of his own recognizance the next day, which means that no bail was required. Following the deadly stabbings, the Old Town community is grappling with this latest bout of violence. I think the, the statistics show, right, that the, the Old Town community has changed. This wasn't, didn't used to be a part of our daily or weekly experience. Scott Kerman, executive director of Blanche House, said news of these attacks is especially difficult for those they serve daily. We know that being unhoused is in and of itself traumatizing. So they are re-traumatized every day. You, you wake up and you're cold, maybe you're wet. Um, you're not really sure what's going to happen that day. They have community with one another. They have connections with us, um, our volunteers and our staff and our peers. And, and they just, they just want a peaceful meal. Um, and they just want to live their life um, w without fear of being attacked. Alma McCall. Well, Northeast Portland residents want answers after more than 50 victims had their car tires slashed. The widespread vandalism happened in the Roseway neighborhood. Portland police initially responded to a call Saturday morning from someone who had two of their tires punctured. Then authorities learned of other damaged cars in the same area. They found more than 30 from Northeast 72nd Avenue to Northeast 77th Avenue. Later in the day, as many as 20 more people found their tires slashed, this time throughout several blocks near Roseway Heights Middle School. So I woke up to my very pleasant neighbor knocking on my door and letting me know that everyone on our block had their tires slashed last night, including my car. Now, what a bummer. No arrests have been made. If you've had your tires slashed or know anything about these cases, Portland police want to hear from you. Well, still to come this morning, growing frustrations from a Northeast Portland retirement community. They say homeless camps nearby make them feel unsafe and they can't get any help on it. We'll take you there next.